What's going on? So I just was finishing up editing the last video and realized that I didn't go into detail at all about the math. And I wanted to make it um, apparent to people that it's not hard. It's just a little math. It's simple adding, subtracting. And you can get your desired measurement without putting it together, taking it apart. Putting it together, taking it apart. I watched a couple of videos of how people were um, clearancing these and they were putting them together, taking like a thousandth off of all of them and then or taking it apart, take a thousandth off, put them all together, put them back in and then check their valve clearance that way. Well, we can do it a simpler way with a $10 caliper and a uh, bit hot glued onto it we can use that now as a micrometer so I'm gonna go through the math and show you so this would be like a part two update addendum whatever you want to call it but this will show you how easy it is and a little bit of thinking pre-planning goes a long ways down the road because now I have a lot less stress on these bolts from putting them in, taking them out, putting them in, taking them out, stretching them. And they're aluminum with steel bolts. So you want to be very careful not to over torque them or keep running them in and out uh, because it'll gum them up. Anyways, here's the math and uh, I'll walk you through it. This is my little sheet. I still haven't done the driver's side, but I wanted to get this out before or with the other video. So it could be seen at the same time and there's no confusion. But here's what I have and it's a little bit jumbled but I'll walk you through it. This is my factory setting. This is what factory wants. This is the tolerance that the factory gives you for each intake and exhaust. And then this is my passenger side head. Went through and numbered each four because it's got four buckets, two valves per cylinder. Um, for intake and exhaust. This is my bucket size right here. This is it converted into inches. I don't have a cap, my caliper will read inches further down than millimeters. This is the one I was working with for the longest time and it only has inches on it. So I was converting everything to inches which everything on this engine was in millimeters or centimeters using the metric system and then I had to just convert it. So I just was getting in the habit of converting it and that way I can also use my caliper. It will go down further in the decimals. After that, I figure out my valve clearance, my gap between my cam and the bucket. And then I know the difference between what the factory uh, tolerance what they want what my actual tolerance is and that's how much I have to take off so this is all my stuff and this is me writing out each doing the math on each one and figuring out which bucket or what clearance each bucket needs in the line so I can just go and look and be like okay one needs this two needs this three needs this or I could even go over here and be like three needs this on exhaust one needs this on intake so I can double check myself like that. And then once I go through, make sure to check it with a cal uh, feeler gauge again. If this is a little bit too confusing because I kind of know what's going on but you guys don't know, I actually went through and fixed it to where we can go through it together. So I have my first, this is all on intake number one uh, for the first bucket. My first bucket size underneath was 496. What that means is it's 4.96 millimeters. And you can check that by measuring it. Um, and then you just go online and you can convert your millimeters into inches. And that gives me my inch that the bucket is from the factory or what this 49 six bucket actually is in inches. So this is all the same, it's just converting from millimeters to inches. Once we have it converted, we know what it is for inches. 
and then we measure the gap between the bucket and the cams. You have to assemble everything and measure your actual uh, gap to figure out what uh, you have so you know how much to take off. Once you know that, you can take your factory tolerance, what the factory wants, and subtract that. So this is my uh, gap, this is my tolerance, so the difference between those is 39 hundredths, 39 thousands, thousands. Uh, so knowing that, that's how much we have to take off of the buckets. We have to take that much off of this first bucket. So we take that and we take the difference between our measured, our converted measurement for 496 is 1950. And then we take and subtract that and we get our new bucket uh, measurement. So this is how thick the bucket needs to be to make sure that I have this gap when I really have this gap. So that's the new measurement that I'm seeking when I'm grinding them down on this. So now that we know our bucket for this clearance, we need it for this. And you can go through and do each one. Each one's the same, you just have different conversion numbers and different gaps. But this part of the equation is all the same. You just need to subtract your, uh, your measurement, gives you how much you need to take off, and then you take how much you need to take off of the original bucket to give you your new bucket so it's always a good idea. This zero didn't need to be here, but on, let's see, on 497, it gave me a six at the end. So that means I need to be closer to 196 than 195. Take it as it is, it's still well within this tolerance if you're off a thousandth or four thousandths. Four ten thousands, four ten thousands, but it'll be okay. So uh, have extra number because you can remove it later, and that way you know if you need to go either way. So now you know how the thought process, I guess, between uh, for this, we can go through, figure out a little bit of math, do it once, install it once, technically twice, and then get really really close to what we need so I'm all within factory specs and I've only assembled this head twice I'll have to disassemble it to get the head studs in but that's three times as opposed to doing it ten times to get my valves each one this is done from the factory like this too but instead of grinding it down they just take one off the shelf and put a new one in it's easy I don't have ones on the shelf. I'm not going to put them in, so I'm going to grind them. Uh, so that's how that worked. Uh, always remember to install, torque down, and check your clearances again. Uh, just to double check yourself. This will work by itself, but always double check yourself because it's real easy to mix the intake and the exhaust up. Uh, I've done it caught myself and I was like why is it too why do I have too much gap but it is easy it can be done I did it I'm not perfect I'm a person uh, but I just wanted to make this quick little update to tell you guys how I went about this and I have an Excel file or I can make an Excel file nice and pretty I have a cheapo little thrown together one that has all the math in here so you just plug your known numbers in and it'll spit out what you need if you guys are needing that, wanting that, would like advice on it, let me know. I can email it to you or somehow get it to you. But it's adding and subtracting. That's all it is. Anyways, that's a quick little update. I want to make sure that that is known for when you're doing this because it's simple. It's easy. Okay, I'm going to quit talking. I'm out of here, guys. Take it easy. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And... Uh, Merry, Merry pre-Christmas. Take it easy. Peace. Peace.